James got some gameplay pulled up for us here. We are uh, starting out, James. There, there you are. You're wearing the house fanatic <laughs> robes uh, from the from the account linking. Thank you, thank you. I, I do look good. And this is our first look at the Hufflepuff common room. I'm assuming. I mean, the, dorm room. The dorm room. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is awesome. But well, Alan, what are we what are we seeing right here with the UI? Because this is our first look. Yeah. So um, right now, we know there's been a lot of questions about uh, about about the HUD because this is the first time we're showing it. So um, kind of going over it from right to left, on the bottom right is what we call our spell diamond. Mm -hmm. So those are, everything that you see in it are slottable spells. So we have over 20 slottable spells that you can earn over the course of the game. Okay. okay. And, and that's where the player can place them and use them and access them very quickly. Um, to the top left of that is you'll see the D-pad and on the left is an eyeball and on the right is a bit of a grid. So uh, the eyeball is an example of one of, not a slottable spell, but what we call an essential spell. Um, there are certain spells that are used in very specific contexts or, um, or that we just want on the controller at all mm -hmm. times. Mm -hmm. And Ravello is one of those. That's okay. left on the D-pad. On the right on the D-pad is that grid represents where you might slot spells. And so okay. right now, today, we're not going to be going into the spell slotting menu because we feel like there's a lot of spoilers there. You know, <laughs> like what are all the spells and what I, can we I do? I would like spoilers, but I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we do want to make sure there's still some goodies left to share with mm -hmm. everyone. And then uh, on the left side, that thing that has the L1 button next to it, uh -huh. that's another thing where we don't want to spoil. But basically, that's where you access your tool wheel. So there's a lot of magical tools that you're going to be uh, kind of brewing and growing over the course of the game. <laughs> and so that's where you would access them rapidly is our tool wheel. OK, cool. Um, there are a few things that I left off the table on the right. Uh, the green bar is your health. And basically, there's a potion next to it. That's how you might heal mm -hmm. the bar above it. We're keeping a secret for now. I apologize. <laughs> and uh, all the way on the left is our mini map with a kind of overhead view of where you are currently yeah. in your common room that updates as you travel through um, Hogwarts and beyond out into the world. And for those those fans out there that aren't a huge fan of mini maps because we know they exist, there's also options to remove the mini map oh, and cool. turn on or off different elements cool. of okay. our HUD. But really immerse yourself. Yeah. In, yeah. In, yeah. <laughs> and we'll go more into the spells as we get into combat, but that's kind of that's that's what you're seeing there. And this is our HUD. Also, Andrew's giving us a, a good look over here. I want to I want to call out. Uh, I'm I'm a big fan of the bedside tables in the dormitories. Um, <laughs> very nice bedside tables. They are nice bedside tables. Yeah. <laughs> the honey colored wood was mentioned in the writing. It's part of lore. It's part of lore. There we go. All right. So now we're walking out into. We we really tried making these low ceilinged dorms to give you that badger set. Yeah. <laughs> Sort of feel. And the first thing I know is the music. The score is amazing with this. Gorgeous. And, yeah. I, and I'm calling out here, uh, th this is unique music that you're hearing for the Hufflepuff common room. Go back to those common room videos we released, you'll notice the music's a little bit different, and that is entirely intentional. We just want to welcome you to your common room in every single house, just <laughs> a little bit differently. So you can customize that experience right away. Oh my gosh, it's so awesome. Look at that. So, I mean, beautiful design. I, I, we could spend like the entire rest of the stream just in the common room here yeah. and talking about it. And I'm sure Boston and James could be like just <laughs> geeking out over it. This, all, oh, the, this all, all the details come from J.K. Rowling's writings for this common room. The round doors, the hanging vines, even the dancing badgers on the it's fireplace. Kind of, it's kind of real earthy vibe. Yeah. Right? It's very, very earthy. Which is which is like elements for each of the houses, yeah. right? Hufflepuff like, is earth, Ravenclaw's air, Gryffindor is fire, and Slytherin is water. We wow. really, really leaned into that for each common room. Wow. So if it feels earthy. We've got a little earthen passageway. That's that's what we were... Hopefully, yeah. it should feel very familiar. Yeah, yeah, it does. It does. But I, I know you don't want to leave, but we're going to be leaving. Thank you. I understand. Whoa, the sound effects though. Like, looking back at the past trailers, it was just music, but kind of hearing how Hogwarts is now, it's so cool. It's tactile. <laughs> yeah. Andrew's going to make use of one of our spells, Revelio. Use Revelio right here, because there's a little magic going on. You notice a little something there. <laughs> yeah. So, um, these are something that we kind of interchangeably called Revealio pages or lore pages. And you'll notice a bunch of things pop up on the screen. Yeah. You see that we got XP. some XP for it. Mm -hmm. And you can also see that we've advanced something called like a field guide challenge okay. up in okay. the corner. Uh -huh. So I want to talk about that a little bit. So we had to ask ourselves, what? Eh? 
<laughs> yeah. Continue, I'm sorry. <laughs> there may be something you may or may not be able to tickle there. Yeah. Um, but uh, in our game, we had to answer the question, you know, we're a late fifth year. What does that mean? How do we catch up to the other students? Okay, okay. And so we have an answer to that question, yeah. and, and it's given to you by the staff. So there's something that we call the Wizard's Field Guide that's granted to you early on in the game. And the Wizard's Field Guide is how, how you actually work on catching up with the other students. So Andrew, if you hit pause for me up here before you push forward a little bit, you can see in our pause menu, it's got this book theme. Wow. That's your wizard's field guide. And you can see your house kind of crest right, overlaid middle, yeah. over it. Right? Okay, okay. And you can see that on your level as well. So that the field guide has this magical property of looking out into the world around you. Mm -hmm. And the reason why it's on loan from the Ministry of Magic and the professors so have cool. granted it to you as a late fifth year student is because they want it to help you catch up to the other kids. Mm -hmm. And its magical property is to discover different opportunities to learn and grow all around you. So the way it works is as you discover gameplay in the game, it actually recognizes that as a challenge, which is kind of On the locked into there. Okay. And Andrew, if you go in there, you'll see different types of challenges that are combat challenges, wow. quest challenges, exploration challenges. And you can see field guide pages are on there yeah, as well. Yeah, 1%, so, we, uh, yeah. we unlock that one field guide page. Yeah. That, that entire category is one of the ways that uh, the book itself kind of fills out into the school and spills out into the school mm -hmm. and kind of hides itself with different types of challenges and different things to do around the school <laughs> that you're that actually going so cool. to interact with to help you grow as a wizard and practice your spells. And so that thing that we just saw is not just a field guide challenge and a way to earn yeah. XP. It's also something that uh, that players can use to learn about the school as they're traveling around. They spot these little secret facts and they can kind of play a little bit of a game discovering all of them and they're there are, there are over a hundred field guide pages just in Hogwarts alone. Oh, so. A little oh. glimpse of the grand staircase yeah. here. We're not gonna... <laughs> Circular staircase. And all all the portraits. The yeah. And I did notice the flu flame just ignite right there, which was so cool. Yeah. Oh man. Fast travel points there. House hour glasses. We had to, <laughs> I, I, how much fun was it designing those and putting all oh, those in gorgeous, there? But, but that they're there just like in the books. Yes. Right it's next to the Great lore. Hall. It's a nod no. to lore. House points is not a core mechanic or system in the game. Yeah, we, it is we didn't turn it into like a, a gameplay system, but it's definitely present throughout our narrative. And and there are lots of choices where we want to nod to things that aren't don't aren't necessarily gameplay systems, but yeah. but we nod to them as as part of the narrative. Over to the right part of there, the Andrew world. was teasing. That's the uh, great, great hall over yeah. through those doors. Again, we're not going there. We're, he's just kind of like, ah, ah. No. Cool, cool. Uh, here's another collectible page. You know, just again, showing you like just these things around Hogwarts that you can oh, do man. and pick up and that's a shot straight from the trailer too. Just that part right there. I, I recognize that. It might be giving you a little fan service here with uh, with callbacks to those. So, and, um, and this must be summertime because I noticed these are the summertime windows. These windows will change with the seasons. Yeah, the detail they put in this is kind of it. I get surprised by it all the time. <laughs> that's a sentient that was a magic thing. castle. So. <laughs> oh man, and we're going out. Look at that. This is where the students would normally kind of congregate, just to kind of chill out, play, meet each other outside of the Great Hall before and after meals. And I, I, I love the way that when the castle interconnects to, uh, that it interconnects outside, inside, there, there are pathways on both sides of things. So you really get a sense of scope yeah. to, to how big this castle and, is. And when you see things, like you'll, you'll notice a bridge over there, that's a place you can go to and cross. Like yeah. everything is, everything that you see is a place that you can visit. Wow. We tried so, we put a lot of effort in making it feel really alive. Um, not just with student population, but even just the greenery and stuff, it's Scotland. Yeah. And this castle has been here for hundreds of years. So just kind of <laughs> the moss yeah. and all the trees that have overgrown it. And oh my gosh. That landscape, that this, Scottish. This location might look a little familiar to you. Um, I thought I recognized it. I believe this is from the spring ASMR. And yes, so that puzzle right there, that view, uh, Andrew is taking us right back to I'm that. I'm gonna tell Andrew not to interact <laughs> with that puzzle and to keep moving on. No. We can't spoil everything. We can't give you everything, right? Hogwarts so. contains a lot of secrets. <laughs> oh my uh, God. But this is uh, th this grand entryway right here coming down into uh, a really kind of central area. Yeah, we're coming upon the central hall and we pointed out the greenhouse outside mm -hmm. and, and we'll notice when we get down there that it's on the right. 
This is a big hub of the school. Like it, it's a big castle, but um, it is designed so you shouldn't get very lost. This is kind of a Grand Central Station. <laughs> I love that. that. I each love direction, that. you know, it's green over there, so the greenhouse is over there. Transfiguration courtyard, you know, library straight ahead. So it's kind of a the hub oh my of God. a lot of the castle. Even the color visually, you can just tell, okay, green, oh, green greenhouse. Oh my God. I should, a lot of it will be subconscious, but yeah. it, it'll help you really feel, learn the castle and mm -hmm. feel like you know your way around. That's, that's not to say that it's easy to learn. All of us here still get pretty lost in it, <laughs> it on a daily castle. basis. It it's a castle. <laughs> it's a... Great point. <laughs> I love that Andrew's uh, definitely teasing a lot of things here. I'm noticing he's swinging the camera this way and that. Is... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's got this grin on his face over there that's just like, yeah, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm from doing. the reveal trailer. That, that dragon. It's oh my gosh. This is another location where the students will great? gather, um, you know, and just kind of chill out. And, and an opportunity uh, to uh, talk to somebody, get a get a yeah. quest giver here. Is everything all right? Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just, I'm Nelly, by the way. I'm just so excited that the Dedalian keys are back. The what keys? The Dedalian keys. Surely you've seen them flying about. Rumor is that a former headmistress, Professor Mole, conjured them to protect the contents of certain locked cabinets years ago. Professor Black couldn't be bothered to disenchant the keys, and they appear every few years. You should try to catch one. Why would I do that? Each key will lead you to a locked cabinet somewhere in the castle. If you can manage to get the key into the cabinet lock, not an easy task, you may find a reward. Perhaps I'll give it a go. I hope you do. In fact, I think I heard one of the keys in the astronomy tower. You should listen for them. So it's kind of side quests are really, it's a cool way to interact you with to your fellow students, with perhaps other teachers, with, you know, various things like that, as well as teach you some more of the secrets of Hogwarts, I think. There's, there's <laughs> a little case, bit of that. In this case, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it, the students are a way to kind of like flesh out the school opportunities around it, what, what we can do, and then those interactions, uh, different interactions with different characters uh, can also offer different choice points for the player. And then some of those things uh, can can affect things game-wide. Some of these affect characters' lives, uh, the ending of the game. Um, and sometimes it's just about you being a little bit of a nice guy or just being a jerk. <laughs> yes, absolutely. So sure. the scale really varies, but, but, uh, but those opportunities exist for the player. Wow, look at this. This is the Dada Defense Against the Dark Arts. The power. Power, which uh, th this is one of my favorite locations in in the castle. Just visually, you come in here and just the the richness of it this is area very is very iconic, uh, very unique to anywhere else in the castle. Somebody else that we can talk to, uh, notably a, a younger student. Yeah, um, she looks like a first year or an eleven year old. Are you all right? Don't you know who I am, Zenobia Noak, the girl whom everyone at school hates for no reason. Everyone hates you. Why? Because Hogwarts is full of bullies and spoil sports. Leander Pruitt's one of the worst, that no talent moon mind. I wanted to make some new friends, and so I brought my collection down to the common room. My gobstone collection, that is. I was hoping someone would want to play. Are you familiar with gobstones? Little balls, like marbles. Grand game. And if you lose, they spray you with a foul smelling liquid. I haven't much interest in a game that sprays you with odors. Only if you lose, which I never do. Or at least, not often. <sighs> People can be so cruel. Just because they're sprayed all over with smelly gobstone spit, it's their own fault for losing. Imelda is one of the worst losers. Everett and Astoria are terrible as well. And now those poor losers have taken my gobstones and hidden them in very high places all over the school. Sounds as if you caused the smelly situation and they responded accordingly. I didn't make the rules. Anyway, I can't work out how to get them back on my own. I don't think I know the necessary spells yet. I need someone 
perhaps a selfless and talented fifth year to help me? I'll see what I can do. I'd appreciate the help. If you do find all of my gobstones, do come and see me again. I'll be back to playing Snake Pit and Jackstone by myself in no time. I, I love that interaction with her because there's so many ways that you can go with that. You can like, <laughs> you can feel for her. You can be a jerk to her. You can be like, gobstone sounds awful. It sounds like you're just mean. Like, uh, yeah, and, and your opportunities to be mean there aren't over. So. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, they continue. I, that's but, a good example of the gob gobstones too. I know people are gonna ask. Gobstones, uh, gobstones playable? They, may, may, they mentioned it, right? Yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, gobstones is one of the things that is not playable in the game. Um, I know we've we've had to rip the bandaid off on a few things. I honestly, the, it's both an it's an amazing thing on the franchise how many things about this like like speak to us as fans and that we want to turn into gameplay. And and there were calls that we had to make over the course of production of kind of like which things we will and won't include in the bucket, Gobstones, just kind of for the overall wizard's the chest. Yeah. Those are things Those that aren't featured. Aren't featured. Yeah. They're featured within the world. Right? I'm glad they're mentioned. They're a part of the wizarding world. Yeah. Yeah. Every single time there was something that life. we we, re we regretted because we couldn't include it. We also tried to figure out a way to make sure that it was included in the narrative, mm. included in the stories, mm. make sure that there's a way to kind of like acknowledge it, touch it, you know, and, and make it feel like it's definitely part of the world. And I know here too, we're, we're, <laughs> I we're like, <laughs> uh, I was like, we're in the Fist Against the Dark Arts Pass. I recognize that staircase to the left where we were just at, Andrew was walking by. I also recognize the dragon at the very top. Oh my gosh. Being in a classroom, I think this is a good opportunity to talk about how classes work because we've gotten a lot of questions about that. Is it mm. a schedule-based system? Is mm. it to, to tell us how classes work? Yeah, so um, ultimately we decided not to go the sim route. So I think like one of the speculations was, is there a time of day and you know that kind of thing? Like, can I miss class at this yeah. time of day? There is a day-night cycle. Yeah. yeah, there is a day-night cycle, but, uh, but everything is very um, narrative-based. And so there's a big mystery going on in the world. There's something happening in the narrative, and we, and we essentially see it as kind of like chapters in that narrative, each chapter of which has a set of missions that you can choose between as you're progressing through the game, and classes fit within that structure. Mm -hmm. So there are mainline things that the players have to do, and then classes also appear on the sides as well as optional things that help you advance your spells. It's absolutely true that classes provide all of your major tools throughout the gameplay, your spells, your major abilities. You get to know the professors. Each one of them has these bespoke uh, kind of events yeah, and moments yeah, in those missions. Yeah. And then there are also additional opportunities outside of that through kind of like side classroom missions essentially where you can learn additional spells or things that you need in your adventure and also get to know the professors better. And I just want to call out something that, that Andrew's been kind of showing off, uh, ways to kind of interact with the environment and just, just uh, engage with the world. And, you know, maybe down there he's sipping some tea yeah. with the... I love it. <laughs> Victorian <laughs> high, you know. Yeah. Well, high society. High society. Yeah. Yeah. And it's no wonder you like this area because we built it for, like, the pure bloods and the Slytherins. <laughs> oh, <and> come on. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, speaking of lived in, like, the sound effects again, the chatter of the communication that's happening and the footsteps, like, it just makes it feel more alive. Little events like that, <laughs> brooms going I by just saw overhead. Go by. <laughs> <laughs> Love that. The data tower was one example, but um, no two hallways should look the same in Hogwarts. It's a, it, it has a lot of personality. Every hallway should be a little bit different, and that's mostly to help orient the players. Right, uh, right. To help you not get lost. Right. But uh, uh, this is Hesperus Hall. That's a little nod from the Marauders, a name that came from the right. Mar Marauders map. But every hallway will have a little bit of a different personality and personality. I like that because yeah, it, it gives it character. does. Like Hogwarts has character. Hogwarts is its own character. No matter where you go, yeah. feels just a little bit different. Yeah, it's a sentient castle full of magic for hundreds of years. Yeah. It's going to kind of and grow full and develop. Of, uh, oh, I heard something. Uh, yeah. Speaking of characters, <laughs> speaking of magic, <laughs> Mr. Magic himself. <laughs> I feature a poltergeist for two. You know, we talked about building on lore too. I know there's that statue over to the side. Oh, yeah. That's Do you know who that is? Lachlan the Lanky. Yeah. And he's yeah. got his, his bow truckle friend. And, <laughs> and I think if players don't know, there's another well, Revelio sorry. page there. Yeah, yeah. there's a, a map of Argyleshire. We know the fat lady. 
hides there. Hides behind it. That's right. <laughs> the third, third book. <laughs> but sometimes a, a hallway has personality by how it looks. Or we just passed a music hallway where 